Culturing microorganisms is important for both research and medicine. Thankfully, scientists have learned how to do this safely and quickly. They can even do some clever maths and work out population size. And today, you're going to learn how to do this too. Download your free study along workbook for this video and others in the cell biology topic. Just visit emmaditichi.com for your free copy. Bacteria multiply by a type of simple cell division, which is called binary fission. It's very similar to normal cell division. First up, the genetic material replicates. In this case, it's a loop of DNA as we're talking about bacteria. The two copies then move apart to opposite ends of the cell. Next, new cell walls form. And in addition to this, the cytoplasm will divide. Eventually, when the walls form in the center, they split off into two cells. You'll notice that there are plasmids and these aren't split equally between the two cells, so each cell is slightly different. You can remember the name binary fission by thinking of it like this. Bi means two, like bicycle has two wheels. And fission means splitting. You may have learned about this in physics when looking at nuclear fission. So putting the two together, binary fission means splitting in two. It's a very quick process and it can take as little as 20 minutes for the bacterial cell to split in two. That's provided it has enough nutrients and a suitable warm temperature. You need to know how to calculate the number of bacteria in a population. You'll be given the mean time and asked to work out how many there are after a certain length of time. So let's look at an example. Staphylococcus aureus divides once every 30 minutes. What is the population size after 3.5 hours? The first step is to check that our units are the same. At the moment, we've got minutes and hours, and they need to be the same. So let's turn 30 minutes into hours, which is 0.5 hours. You get this by doing 30 divided by 60, or just think of it as half an hour. Next, we'll work out how many times it has divided. So to get the divisions, we're going to do the time that we've been given. In this case, it's three and a half hours. And we divide it by the length of one division, which in this case is 0 0.5. So we take our numbers and we pop them in. And 3.5 divided by 0 0.5 gives us seven divisions. So that's seven divisions in three and a half hours. It's important to remember that each new cell that is created will also divide in this time. So each new cell will divide to give two new cells. Because of this, we're able to use the number two to work out our answer. And we just do two to the power of the number of divisions. So in this case, it's going to be two to the power of seven. This just means you're multiplying two by itself seven times but it's easier to do it on your calculator and you get 128. Okay, try the next question on your own and then press play when you're ready to go through the answer. Ready? So Helicobacter pylori divides once every 45 minutes. Calculate the population of the colony after nine hours. So again, our units aren't the same, so we're gonna turn the minutes into hours and that gives us 0 0.75 hours when we divide 45 by 60. Then we're going to work out the number of divisions. We're going to divide the time given, which here is nine hours, by the length of the, the division, which we just worked out, was 0 0.75 hours. And when we pop that into our calculator, it gives us 12 divisions. So we take our magic two and put it to the power of 12. From our calculator, we get 4,096. Now you could be asked to give your answer in standard form. This is a higher tier skill and it's one of the mathematical parts of your paper. So pop on over to my math skills and biology if you haven't learned how to do this skill yet. When you're done, come back here and see if you're not able to do it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is make a number that's between one and 10 by placing a decimal point somewhere in this number. That would go here to give us 4.096. And now we're just gonna work out what our 10 is to the power of. So we count one, two, three, back to the original decimal place. And that's gonna give us 4.096 times 10 to the three. And remember that's higher tier only. 
Now we're going to look at how you can prepare uncontaminated bacterial cultures using aseptic technique. For the aseptic techniques, you need to be able to explain why those steps are done. So I'll do those parts in blue. Firstly, bacteria are grown in a culture medium that supplies them with nutrients to grow. This can be supplied by either a nutrient broth or a solid agar jelly. These are both found inside a Petri dish. The Petri dishes and culture media must be sterilized before use. This ensures that any unwanted microorganisms are killed. This wire loop is called an inoculating loop. Just like before, the inoculating loop must be sterilized before use by passing it through a hot flame, like a Bunsen burner flame. This of course kills any microorganisms that were on it. It's then allowed to cool down and then used to spread your bacteria. After transferring and spreading the bacteria, the lid of the Petri dish should be secured lightly with adhesive tape. This is important as it prevents any microorganisms that are in the air from entering your Petri dish and culture. The Petri dish is then stored upside down. This looks odd, but it stops any drops of condensation forming on the lid and dropping down onto the agar surface, which could damage or prevent growth of the bacterial cultures. Finally, in school laboratories, cultures should be incubated at 25 degrees Celsius or lower. If a higher temperature were used, harmful pathogens would be more likely to grow, so 25 degrees Celsius and lower is safer for schools. In industrial conditions, cultures may be incubated at higher temperatures so that they grow faster. Now there is a required practical on the culturing of microorganisms, and in this you'll look at the effect of antiseptics or antibiotics on bacterial growth. You'll learn more about zones of inhibition and calculations for this then, so we won't cover it here. Now it's time for some quick questions. Pause the video, give them a go, and then press play when you're ready to go over the answers. Number one, name the process by which bacteria divide. It's binary fission. Two, a bacterial cell divides once every 30 minutes. Work out the population size of the colony after eight hours and give your answer in standard form. That's for higher tier only, so just do that if you can. So first, we're going to compare our units. We need to turn 30 minutes into 0.5 hours. And then we're going to work out the number of divisions by dividing the time given by the length of time for one division. So our time given was 8 hours, and we divide it by the 0.5 that we worked out. So there are going to be 16 divisions in the 8 hours. Now we just do 2 to the power of 16, and we get 65,536. Now we do need to give it in standard form if you're studying higher tier. So we're going to put our decimal point here to give us our number between 1 and 10. And then we count 1, 2, 3, 4 powers. So it's going to be 10 to the power of 4. So we just write out our number in full, 6.5536 times 10 to the power of 4. Well done if you got that. 3. When preparing an uncontaminated culture of bacterial cells, the lid of the Petri dish should be secured lightly with adhesive tape and stored upside down. Explain why. Securing with adhesive tape prevents the entry of microorganisms from the air and storing it upside down prevents condensation droplets falling from the lid onto the agar surface, which would interfere with the bacterial growth. How did you do on all of these questions? Well done! That is the last video of the cell biology topic. You can find videos for all of the other topics by clicking my icon over there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!